and that let lets me to move the dipstick on the side enough to be able to remove the water pump. Using razor blade and gasket scraper I have to remove all those surfaces and the remainings of the uh, sealant which is still stuck in that area. After everything is clean I will normally apply seal packing which is basically product from Toyota. It's a gasket maker black color in the tube. But this water pump supplied by the owner of the vehicle came with the gasket so I'm going to use that. So I'm carefully sliding the pump on the engine with the gasket going first and I will start installing all the bolts. I first will install all seven bolts by the hand only and gradually carefully start tightening them again by hand only. So I have all seven bolts tightened by the hand only. Now I will use the ratchet and very lightly in criss-cross pattern put a little bit more pressure on it. And now I'm finally ready to torque all those bolts to the 20 newton meters. All correctly torqued. I can install back this oil cooler hose and install back correctly the dipstick. Here you can see the new thermostat. It's number from Toyota and this is new gasket which you purchase separately. And as I mentioned previously, this little jiggle valve needs to be installed downward position, so on the bottom. It goes easily inside. Now the valve is on very bottom. I can reinstall this water inlet. Install these three bolts which were holding it previously and again I will just install them first by hand which I'm making sure that it sits nicely and evenly on that thermostat gasket and these will be also torqued to the 20 newton meters. As the next thing I will go ahead and replace this main front seal it was supplied by the customer it's a good habit some people don't replace it but I think it's a good habit and uh, you can see it on different video on my channel so I'll be not filming it right now new seal installed everything clean so I can start going backwards right installing stuff I can start with this crankshaft pulley right I need to align this groove with the key which is right there hopefully you can see it so I put it nicely on there's only one way to put it on and nicely easily slide it there I will continue with the brand new number one idler pulley I'll be reusing this spacer and this bolt the new one is per perfectly ready so let's put it on I'm using that hex number 10 right as we remove that and I will be torquing this to the 35 newton meters old and new number 2 idler pulley and I'm reusing this bolt first putting it by hand again and after that this one will be torqued to the 40 newton meters Nice, 40. By the way, all those specs are from original factory Toyota repair manual. I checked all my timing marks, they are correct again, nothing moved. I have a brand new timing belt here, so it's time to install it. And the whole procedure starts on the left hand cam, and this mark is facing forward. So I'm taking the timing belt and I start the installation on this cam. I can use the pin and secure it there this way. I continue routing the timing belt below that idler pulley 
and I'm matching the mark on the right hand cam. Again I can secure it by this pin. I will show you the detail. Here you can see the detail. It's all matching and the arrow is showing forward. And the next step is to continue over the pulley of the water pump, which is right here, and aligning it correctly on the crankshaft pulley down there. I needed my both hands to put it over the crankshaft and then the last one is the number one idler. Most importantly I want to show you that last matching spot which is visible on the timing belt and on the crankshaft pulley. Do you see that? And that perfectly gives me assurance that this is correctly installed and I'm ready to install the tensioner. Here you can see the tensioners side by side. Old one, new one. See this pin is still holding this pin inside. The tensioner is in the place. The both bolts are tightened 27 newton meters. So I'm ready to pull the pin of the tensioner and release it. I can feel there is a proper tension on the timing belt. So it's a time to remove those pins and check entire timing. To check the timing to rotate the engine and you always rotate it only clockwise. I temporarily install this bolt. So as I said, only clockwise, right? I will rotate the engine with the timing belt nicely in the position and I will observe all, all the timing marks after I move it all the way around. And hopefully they are all matching and I don't have to redo the whole thing. And I can see these marks are matching on the bow's top pulleys and it's also matching down there, down there on the crankshaft pulley and that oil pump cover. It's perfectly matching. So my timing is perfect and I can go ahead and install my timing belt guard. Now this is a note for you. There is the, this lip, this edge, it's slightly, slightly going forward. So that's the direction it will be installed. <laughs> that, that lip is facing away from the belt or let's say forward. That means I'm ready to install number one timing belt cover and these two bolts back on this starter wire bracket. The torque for those bolts, those four bolts, was a nine newton meters. My next step is to install the crankshaft pulley and that bolt or harmonic dampener, however you call it. So that needs to go on the groove obviously, right? And the bolt will be torqued 300 newton meters. And another confirmation that the timing is correct. The dot is on the zero the same way as it was before. I continue with installing this fan bracket. Here is the bolt for it. And also that supportive bracket which is for adjusting of the power steering. All the seals here are good so I'm ready to install back number two timing belt cover. I tighten those poles with a nine newton meters and I will keep installing all the other parts and these procedures as we discussed before you can see in my different videos. Everything is installed back in place 
I rechecked everything multiple times and then I briefly started the engine just see that it's running correctly and there are not some weird sounds coming out of it. Now I will start a let's say slow process of filling the cooling system with the coolant and getting rid of that air bubbles which are inside bleeding the cooling system basically. But before I will do all of that I have the last thing to do. The good timing belt sets are coming with this maintenance record so I will fill that out with the date and the odometer reading and then you place this protective film over that sticker. And here you can see how it looks when it's installed. I'm pretty sure there is a lot of people who will find this video helpful or they can learn something from it. This is the way I deal with this service and I hope you enjoy it watching it. Make sure you are subscribed so I have way more videos about the Toyotas coming your way soon. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.